when we were ordering our Mercedes four-wheel drive Sprinter, uh, we had choices of all the different options. And one of the things we did buy was a bracket to install an auxiliary alternator if we ever decided to. That was $415. We also chose to have a auxiliary 100 amp deep cycle battery. They install that under the hood and then run wires back underneath the driver's seat. My original plan was to add an additional house battery and wire it in parallel with this auxiliary battery. That way the, the Mercedes standard alternator, 220 amp alternator, would charge both this auxiliary battery plus the house battery I would add. After we picked up our van, I learned that because we had the auxiliary battery installed, it is not permitted to connect an additional battery in parallel with it. This was common in the past, but as I understand it, it's now not allowed because of the new generation of regulators, which are computer controlled using what Mercedes calls local interface network. So it looked like uh, I had to find a different solution of what to do with the auxiliary battery. I, we came up with a pretty good idea and I'll show you later on. One of the first things you need to do when you're getting ready to plan your wiring is to determine what you need power for. Our 120 volt AC requirements include charging our laptop computers, a couple of other small appliances, and our largest draw, an electric kettle, which does use 800 watts to make hot water. We decided we would have no microwave. Because our maximum watt requirements would be the 800, we chose the Magnum 112 inverter charger, which is uh, made for 1000 watts. For our 12 volt daily usage, the refrigerator is going to be our largest draw. Even though it draws about 3 amps per hour, the number of hours it will run per day to keep it cold in approximately 80 degree temperature would use about 25 amp hours per day. We have both a diesel stove and a diesel heater. Uh, I estimated that maximum we would use those about 4 hours a day, maybe a little more in colder weather and less in warmer weather. So I figured on 8 amp hours per day. We have a ceiling fan that uh, we'll use when it's hot or also when we're cooking. So uh, estimated five hours on that giving about a seven amp hour usage per day. USB ports for charging batteries for our cameras and also for using our computers uh, would use about six per day. A water pump, I said for one hour per day, but it probably would be less than that. That would use three amp hours. And LED lights use hardly anything. So even leaving on all our lights for five hours a day would only use three amp hours. That gives us a total requirement per day of 52 amp hours. And I think that's a pretty conservative uh, estimate. We estimated our 12 volt usage over a 24 hour period of approximately 52 amp hours. We also estimated the solar panel would supply about 28 amp hours of that power, leaving the battery to supply the other 24 amp hours. We planned our electrical capability to allow us to go five days without being plugged into a 120 volt power or to be running the engine to charge the battery. So that would require that we had about 120 amp hours available from our battery. The rule with AGM batteries is that you should never run them down below 50% of their total power. So if we need 120, then we have a battery size requirement of about 240 amp hours. We chose a Lifeline battery, one of the top rated batteries, and bought the 8DL model, which has a capacity of 255 amp hours. Battery and inverter are mounted on the floor of the van with brackets going down through the floor to make sure that the, the heavy battery is protected and can't come loose in an accident. This is all underneath one of our rear benches.
The main component of our electrical system is the 255 amp hour lifeline battery. That will supply both 12 volts to run lights and appliances in the van. It will also send 12 volts to the Magnum 1012 inverter to, conver uh, to convert that to 120 volts up to 1000 watts usage. We will have three different ways to charge the Lifeline battery. The first way was we will have a 110 watt solar panel on the roof of the van and that runs through a solar controller which will supply uh, up to seven amps per hour to charge the batteries. So on a good sunny day, we can uh, keep that battery charged up for probably close to what we'll be using on a daily basis. The second way we can charge our battery is by plugging into 120 volt shore power. 120 volts will come into the Magnum 1012 and that will then be charging the Lifeline battery. Third way we can charge our house batteries is from the Mercedes auxiliary battery that was installed when we bought the car. We are not allowed to hook the auxiliary battery to our house batteries, but we can hook a inverter to that battery. So we're adding a Semlex 1000 watt inverter, which will then, using the power from the auxiliary battery, create 120 volts at up to 1000 watts, and then we'll run that line directly to our charger in the back, which will then charge the battery. I mounted the inverter that will be running just off the Mercedes auxiliary battery. Now that we know that we want a solar panel, an inverter running off the auxiliary battery, and the Magnum 1012 inverter charger, we need to find a location for the remote controls for these units. You want to keep the wiring as short as possible between the battery and the inverter and the battery and the charger. So we're mounting all the remotes on a single panel that will be at the end of one of our back benches. First thing to do is to look at the requirements by size and what you need to place on that panel and determine how much space it's really going to take. Once you get the space together, then laying out the actual items on the panel and then marking them and mounting them is the next step. 